Yay, Kenwood TS 520HF, 80 to 10 metres, and you're the winner. Well, happy days. Uh, I was bidding on this item. In fact, uh, first period of school today, just at the end it came up, and uh, I was watching the auction with bated breath, and it wasn't too much bidding happening. And as luck would have it, $15 over the original asking price, I've managed to, to snag it. So I could get it shipped out by Australia Post. I'm not too comfortable with a rig that has, uh, please pardon the rain on the, on the roof. I'm not too confident with sending out a rig that has Val finals via Australia Post. I mean, the thing could get dropped and you know 50 years worth of uh, amateur radio history down the drain so what i'm going to do is i always love a, a trip down the south coast anyway so my wife and i are going to have a lovely weekend at huskinson on jarvis bay and uh, we're going to drive down pick up the rig chuck it in the boot and i will not chuck it carefully place it in the boot we shall return home and see whether we've got uh, the proverbial boat anchor or a rig that's going to provide me with lots of enjoyment. Microphone. We have a photocopied manual. We'll get this out and put it on the table and we'll get a better look at it. Hello, fellow hands. Say hello to my new friend. Okay, well this is the uh, absolute moment of truth. Well, that seems like a good start. Let's see if we can uh, pull in some signals. The Wireless Institute Australia News. It's time to read you all a little bedtime story. The TS520 is a highly sophisticated solid state amateur radio transceiver employing only three vacuum tubes operating on all amateur bands between 3.5 and 29.7 megahertz. So there you go, only three vacuum tubes. Believe it or not, back in the 1970s, uh, to have a rig with uh, only three vacuum tubes was something that was quite miraculous. Now it's uh, wonderful that it does have those vacuum tubes in it because it affords you the opportunity of tuning the radio kind of like some of the wonderful rigs uh, that I got to operate when I was offshore. Um, the main ship's transmitter was normally uh, a Conqueror HS, which had massive valve finals. I think it was a kilowatt output. And uh, you had to dip the plate and do that sort of stuff. And we spent probably a few days learning how to operate that radio. And of course, there was the marvelous reserve transmitter, the name of which escapes me, but um, it actually had the Morse code key sticking out the front of it. It was about 250 watts. And uh, it was easy peasy to operate that rig. And you had to test it, I think on a weekly basis. I'm 
pretty sure. Or maybe it was more often than that, I can't actually remember, but um, quite often when I was feeling lazy and I didn't feel like tuning up the main rig or if the main rig was sitting on some red phone channel, um, I'd fire up the reserve transmitter and use the uh, 500 kilohertz frequency to uh, request a red phone, a QRJ call. So um, yes, a little bit of reminiscing of my time spent at sea. We are now going to take a quick look inside this radio. We'll take the top off it. I'm not planning on doing too much. I want to see um, what filters are in it and uh, what sort of state we have inside when I need to do some work. But uh, stick around, we'll have a look inside and see the guts of this radio. Alas, we don't have the CW filter. Apparently when this rig was marketed, it was about 600 odd US dollars. And uh, the CW filter alone was like $125. And they're quite rare to come by. So um, I'm gonna have to be spending a bit of time looking for one of those filters. Um, having said that, uh, I don't usually do a hell of a lot of filtering when I'm playing around with uh, with uh, CW, I like to use my ears to do that. So um, it's not something that I've been terribly keen on in the past, having had to deal with quite basic sort of uh, filtering when it came to the rigs I was using when I was offshore um, for the limited amount of CW that I did take. So this is the inside of a, a 1970s analog rig. You can see the huge amount of work that went into this. And um, that's one of the three tubes that's in this radio. And I have it from the manual that I'm just looking at the manual at the present moment. Um, that driver tube you can see there is a 1, 2 or 12 BY7A, 1, 2 BY7A driver tube. And that is going to be fed into two S2001A tubes to uh, generate the, uh, the 100 watts. So, um, yeah, it's a thing of beauty. You can see here, it chains driving the uh, capacitors for uh, dipping our, our, adjusting our drive. And um, this uh, does the, uh, the plate dip. And I plan on um, re-establishing my knowledge on a lot of this stuff. I've forgotten a lot of this stuff. Um, but yeah, it's very important to tune the final stage of a, a transmitter like this if it has valves in it, uh, or you're gonna be uh, looking for a new final stage. There is a heap of videos on this rig in particular. Um, a lot of people who have put effort into showing how to fix it, how to modify it. Um, I am by no means an expert as you can tell. It's great to see those resources out and about because at some point in time I may need them. Fingers crossed not in the near future because um, as you can see fault finding in something like this is going to be like a Mr. Carlson's lap adventure. A little trip back into the history of analog transceivers from the 1970s. Uh, this being a state of the art transceiver from the 1970s, something that um, young novices would have really aspired to owning. And I have it now and I am absolutely chuffed that it is still operational. And I think I'm gonna get uh, many years of reliable service out of it. He's hoping. Well. Like Field of Dreams, Kevin Costner said, if you build it, they will come. Well, I built the console and as it would have it, as luck would have it, the shelf is exactly the right size for this TS520. It's almost like I knew this rig was coming, even though I didn't. So it sort of popped up on the classifieds and I got it for the princely sum of 415 Australian dollars and it is working a treat. So it's a cracker on receive. I am going to have to do a little bit of work to get on the air and it's not because the rig is not working as far as I know. Uh, it will be because my Anan on my original antenna and there's videos on the, on the channel, my original antenna, which is a half wave at seven megahertz with a trap for 80 meters. And it was very close to all the metal on, on the roofs here. And I've taken that antenna down. I've now got an inverted V at a decent height. It's about 12 meters above the ground. And it's end fed and it's a full half wavelength at uh, 80 meters. 
which um, is great, but the Anan is a QRP Anan, and it's fine for the QRP rigs I've been running, but this thing's gonna push out uh, 100 watts, and it's gonna fry the Anan and probably fry, fry the finals in this thing. So um, my mate Chris has given me these toroids here, so they're gonna be made into a, a higher power Anan that will more than adequately look after 100 watts. As it happens with all new gear, it's some people see it as a problem. I don't see it as a problem. I see it as an opportunity for you know homebrew adventures. So 100 watt Anan, I'll take the low power one down and I'll pair it with the uh, antenna that I took down, which is a reasonable length uh, to string up in trees when I go kayaking and whatnot. The low coil on it's very, very large. Uh, probably, I don't know if I'll keep it on there or not. I may make it an option to attach and remove it um, depending on whether I take the 3.5 megahertz Oz QRP or the 7 megahertz one with me. I've got to rebuild that on it and I've also got to get myself a 100 watt dummy load so I can tune the plate and the drive and whatnot of this thing into a, a, a good um, 50 ohm load so that uh, I'm not risking blowing my finals. Um, this rig has valve finals in it and um, we want to look after those. I am also going to have to look online to see if I can get some spare tubes so that in the event of the finals actually failing, I do have uh, replacement tubes. It'll be a very sad day that when uh, I can't replace those and this rig has to be retired because it's my new best friend. So that is the new acquisition for the shack. Um, I am totally stoked to have this thing. It is probably not much younger than I am. And like me, it's still in fine shape, which is wonderful. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. 73s or 73. I don't know which is correct. So please comment below whether you think it's 73s or 73. I think it's probably 73 because that's what you'd say on, uh, on the real Jedi mode of operation, which is continuous wave Morse code. Um, and please comment below, like and subscribe, and I shall see you in the next video on the art of engineering, which has become the art of ham radio presently um, because that's all that I seem to be interested in. I've become very obsessed. Um, see you in the next one.